Yes, yes, yes. Happy Monday. Here we go again. One more week ready to go. Where we show up, we learn, we grow, we repeat. Keep going around in circles and doing it all again. Oh, great weekend as well. And I'm running a little bit late there. Just trying to sort out the mic. This is going to be show 379. And today we're going to talk about six reasons why I feel men are dying before they're even dead. Six reasons why I feel men are dying before they're even dead. Okay, um, So let's get into this. Welcome to the Rise to Thrive show. I am your host, James Borman. And if you are coming through, then please do let me know by hitting the love heart button. And what I want you to do is comment um, in, the, uh, in the comments box. Um, whether you've experienced feeling quite hollow, okay? So have you ever experienced feeling quite hollow, quite empty, quite lost? Um, quite, quite, yeah, just that empty feeling, you know, um, at some point or stage in your life, okay? So let's get into it. Here are those six reasons um, based on, I think, my own experience, but also the experience of working with thousands of lads now. Okay, and understand what's going on in, in, in and around that mindset. All right, so number one, um, feeling overwhelmed with responsibilities. Um, you know, I think if we look at this logically, when, when we go through our teens, we then go into our, our, our 20s, and we go through our 20s, and we go through most of us, this, you know, this, is not, this doesn't speak for everyone, but most of us, when we go through our 20s with without too much responsibility, right? We kind of come out of the college or university environment and then we start working. And a lot of the time maybe we're going away with the lads or maybe we are just on the dating game. Maybe we're going to the gym when we, when we kind of just feel like it. Um, maybe we go on holiday when we feel like it, right? But there's no real massive amounts of pressure. There's no like feelings of overwhelm due to responsibilities. There, there might be some micro level, but most early 20s, mid 20s, um, there isn't really that pressure. And then suddenly we, like, we meet someone, we get married, and then we're responsible for someone else. Um, and then we have children, and then man, we're responsible for these little creatures. <laughs> and then man, we're then stuck in a job that maybe we never sort of envisaged that we'd be stuck in. Now all of a sudden, we're gonna pay bills. Morning. Morning. How are you? Yeah. Um, now all of a sudden we're stuck in a we're stuck in a situation where we have to pay bills, we have to pay the mortgage, we're making sure the kids, and we're under pressure, and we feel overwhelmed with that, and that can that can extract any life out of us, any passion for life, any desire for life, because it's just grinding down and pounding down. And it just becomes exhausting for a lot of guys. It shouldn't be. And there is a way to manage all of that. But it might be just at that particular time you don't know how to manage that. Okay, number two. It's not external pressure. I think external pressure is something that we, we can control, we can manage. But it's self-pressure. Okay, self-pressure. Self-pressure is the pressure we put on ourselves. It's the standards that we Im imply on ourselves, that we, that we feel like we should be reaching. It's these expectations that we set that weigh down on us hugely, right? And because they weigh down on us, then we're struggling to keep that weight off. We're struggling to handle our own pressure, the narrative in our own mind. And that slowly, like a disease inside of you, eats away. Boom, just like stripping you of life through that self-pressure because you never live up to that pressure. Okay? You never live up to that pressure because you always set the expectation way too high, which is what I'm always talking about. Listen, put your expectations where your level of conditioning is so that you don't put that huge amount of pressure on you. You've already got lots of pressures in terms of paying bills, trying to keep a job, trying to be a good husband, yada, 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 all of that. Okay? And it's one of the biggest weights for me, I think. Number three, you don't know how to have or main contro uh, maintain control. So control 
it's key, right? I did a workshop last week. Ma maintaining control of your time, your energy, and focus. So if I look at all of the guys that are working with me, right? If if I look at all the guys that are in my programs or my brotherhood or they're in my private groups or my one-to-ones, whatever, those guys are educating themselves. The, the thing that we do is we try to educate men how to build control so that we're controlling the narrative in our mind. Okay? I don't think you can ever stop it, but you can control it. You can control how you feel. You can control the overwhelm. You can put perspective on things. You can control your emotions. These are things that we teach and educate, but most, the vast majority of men don't know how to do that. I've got all of this self-pressure. I've got all of this overwhelm, but we're not educated to deal with it because we don't teach it at school. We teach a ton of crap at school. You know, we don't teach people how to handle their emotions, how to be in more control, how to have structure, routines and systems that control the environment, control inside of here and what you're saying. So when we talk about not knowing how to have or maintain control, that's where, that's where things start spiraling out of control. That's why chaos reigns. That's when we become frantic. That's when we make bad decisions. That's when we disconnect from our family. That's when we start drinking all the byproducts of losing control. So we feel hollow. We feel negative because we're not waking up and going, let's go. <laughs> and you don't feel like that every day. That's just me being exaggerating it, right? You don't feel like that every day. But you get my point. You wake up and you can't, man, I've got some targets. I've got some focus. I've got some vision. I've got some standards. I've got some control of the things that are uh, coming in, right? Number four, really key one, somewhere along the line, you stop prioritizing yourself. So somewhere along the line, you stop prioritizing you. And you're maybe third in your priority list, maybe lower. But everything and everyone, everyone's needs and every situation and every scenario kind of required you to deal with that, right? And the more that we deal with that, the less energy, the less time that we have for us. Yeah, if we're going to be the leader, we need to make sure that we are the priority and because we're not the priority, we're not leading our, our wife, we're not leading our children, we're not leading our jobs, we're not leading our business. We're not leading ourselves. You're not leading yourselves because you're not prioritizing yourself. If you don't prioritize yourself, you can't show up and perform at a high level. Do you know what I mean? But when you are starting to show up and you do show up at a high level and you do put yourself first, your health, your, um, your mindset, your emotional and your physical health, man, everybody gets the best version of that. Okay? And that's difficult for people to understand. But you're no good to anyone if you have a stroke because you're not taking care of yourself. Do you know what I mean? So they just stopped prioritizing themselves and that's how they slowly start dying inside before they're even, they're even dead, right? Number five, they stopped having a vision, or worse, never even had one. Okay. Did you have, have you guys had a vision before? I like, so I know some of you work with me, so I'm hoping that you'll say yes there, but for some of you who haven't worked with me, um, for some of you, you won't even know what your vision is because you're so in the mold, you're so in the moment, you're so in, that, in the dungeons of life at the minute that you can't see the daylight. You don't know how to, you haven't been educated how to build a vision. It's like, how do I build a vision? What is a vision? What are the things I have to consider? You know, what do I wake up and think to myself, oh, this is, this is a direction that I want to go. And that leads to that purposeful direction, right? When you don't have that direction, we feel lost and hollow. And again, that brings those feelings of, of depressive state and anxiety on. It's no wonder that most guys are falling in that place. They don't know where they're going. And then the last one is overthink themselves in a bad mental state. So guys are just overthinking themselves into a bad state. I think a lot of the time, like life isn't really that, isn't, isn't as bad as most of us make out. And I think are overthinking puts the narrative inside of our head that actually I think we're doing, we feel like we're doing worse than what we, maybe we are. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think this is where perspective comes in. Um, and I think what's really interesting is that when you, look at, um, when you look at how grateful maybe your situation is, is that, listen, you might have two legs and two arms, 
you don't have missiles coming in, you're not at war with another country, <clears throat> the country's not struggling to have running water, do you know what I mean? Like, when you really, like, go to the bare bones of the things that are happening in life and around the world right now, do you really have it that bad? Like, in terms of that little overthinking chip inside of your head, it's just like, oh, my God, my life is terrible. It's worth, like, you know, I used to go to that place and I used to be like, jeez. And a little bit of perspective and gratitude, you're suddenly like, well, jeez, do you know what I mean? I could be over there and, like, the Ukraine-Russian. And I think that's what's really important is to have that perspective of that overthinking. But that overthinking takes us to a place where, you know, we feel empty, we feel lost. Um, so those are my six, guys. I hope that they kind of give you some perspective. Um, it's not trying to paint a doom and gloom thing. It's awareness things. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Education, education. And the byproduct of showing up and those things happening is us slowly deteriorating. That's why it's so, so important that we show up, we do these 1% wins, we do things, right, it, we, we do jiu-jitsu, we eat better, we go to the gym, we go out for walks, we wake up in the morning, we do journaling, we co communicate with other men, we engage with other men, we're part of a community, these are the things that bring us up, these are the things that allow us to give us direction and, and strength and, you know, capabilities to, to, to live a life that you feel happy with. Okay, you can't stay in that state. You can't stay in that state. You can't expect a marriage to work in that state. You can't expect to, to have a good relationship with your child in that state. You can't expect to live a long life in that state. There is always a way out. Always, 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 always. It doesn't matter what's happening in any of those six things or other things I haven't even mentioned. There's always a bigger picture. And it's just conditioning your mind. It's doing 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 the mind thing getting that in check and rewiring the core the narrative and what you, and the story that you tell yourself i want you to tell me the one thing that you got from today's show just put it in the comments down below tell me that one thing what is that like everything we've talked about what's the one thing that you can resonate with maybe you can resonate with it all but what's like one standout thing that you're going to kind of take away into your day and tomorrow until we meet again on wednesday i'll see you then